The California missions began in the mid-1700s as an effort to colonize the West Coast and convert the native people to Christianity. In 1542, Spanish explorer Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo claimed California for the Spanish crown. But it would be another 200 years before the Spanish attempted to occupy the land. Around that time, Spain's New World Empire was facing a threat from Russian fur traders who were making their way south from Alaska. Those concerns were well founded. By the middle of the mission era, the Russians had established a fur trading colony just 40 miles north of San Francisco. Spain's king, Carlos III, devised a plan to establish missions, presidios, and pueblos up and down the Alta California coast. He ordered the California Indians be educated and converted to Christianity. This would effectively transform the native people into Spanish citizens and reinforce Spain's claim to the land. So in 1769, Franciscan priests, along with Spanish soldiers and a small group of pioneers, headed north along the California coast to choose sites and begin construction. Mission settlements were placed roughly 30 miles apart so that they were separated by a long day's ride on horseback. The Spanish also established a 600-mile-long trail to connect the new outposts. This trail was called El Camino Real, or the Royal Road. Streets that follow or run parallel to this historic route still bear its name. During the early 1900s, the trail was marked with California mission bells, and they can still be followed today. The native tribes who lived in the region were resistant to the missions because of the impact on their people and their way of life. In 1775, hundreds of local tribesmen attacked the San Diego mission and burned it to the ground. The mission was rebuilt, and by 1823, a total of 21 missions had been established, stretching from San Diego in the south to Sonoma in the north. Each mission was supposed to be self-sufficient and was designed to provide or construct anything they might need. While no two missions were identical, they all employed the same basic building style, which later came to be known as mission architecture. Design and construction were limited by the materials that were available and a lack of skilled labor. The Franciscans did their best to build something practical, yet remind them of their Spanish homeland. The first priority when beginning a settlement was the location and construction of the church. It was usually oriented to take best advantage of the sun's position or interior illumination. Once the location for the church was selected, its position would be marked and the remainder of the mission complex would be laid out around it. Living quarters, workshops, kitchens, and storerooms were grouped around a walled courtyard or patio. The courtyard was used for gatherings and celebrations as well as a refuge if attacked. Four presidios, or military forts, were also built to house the soldiers. Each presidio was responsible for the safety of the missions and pueblos in their region, and also functioned as a deterrent to possible English or Russian aggression. In return, the missions were expected to provide the presidios with food and minister to the soldiers. The Spanish introduced modern agriculture and new foods to California. Pigs, chickens, cattle, and many of the fruits and vegetables we eat today didn't exist in California before the Spanish arrived. Farming was an especially important part of mission life. The native people had been living off the land as hunter-gatherers for thousands of years before the Spanish arrived, and were unaccustomed to farming and ranching. With only primitive tools, it was a labor-intensive process that required a large workforce. The priests and soldiers did little of the manual labor around the missions, instead assigning it as daily chores to the native people that lived in the missions. The natives quickly learned that the work was not optional. Uncooperative natives were often punished, and if they tried to leave, soldiers were sent out to find and return them. Letters written by the Franciscan leaders show that they were more concerned with converting souls and providing a workforce than education and creating more Spanish citizens. As the native people died of mistreatment and disease, the priests had to go farther and farther out to bring people to the missions. In 1821, Mexico declared independence from Spain and effectively ended the mission era. The Franciscans left and the natives were freed from the missions, but their situation would not improve. During the three decades the California was ruled by Mexico, 
The native people were persecuted by the Mexican ranchers who now claimed the land. In 1850, California became the 31st state, and in 1851, the governor of California issued an order calling for the extermination of all Indians in the state. At the beginning of the mission era, it is estimated that there were nearly 300,000 native people in California. By 1890, that number had been reduced to just 17,000. Although the missions were only active for about 70 years, they had a lasting impact on life in California. In some ways, King Carlos III's plan was a success. The language, style, and customs of the Hispanic world took root in California and remain to this day. Many streets, cities, landmarks, and other places have Spanish names. Mission-style architecture can be found in private and public buildings, and agriculture has become the state's biggest industry. It came at a high cost to the native people, but California's modern roots were planted by the missions.